from Crokey and we've met um, Simon Judkins at the Fitzroy um, Town Hall and he is the president of the uh, Australian College of Emergency Medicine uh, and this has like been a bit of a combination of a door, doorstop and a town hall meeting. It's, <laughs> That's right. it's been so good hearing from you. Um, I, so we're here today talking about community health, yep. health and some of the issue, issues for the Victorian election. I know you've done a lot of work recently on um, people with mental health problems uh, attending the emergency department. What's this, what sort of things do you think state governments can do to make sure that those people really get good treatment in the community? Well, I think the conversation we just had, I think, points some of this stuff out, is that, you know, there seems to be a lot of silos that have been built about, mental, about um, delivery of mental health care. Yeah. I think we really need to look at where the gaps are and why the systems aren't linking up. Mm. Certainly there are, there, are, there are issues that really need to be looked at. For example, in our emergency departments, we do need to look at therapeutic environments. We do need to look at having more nurse practitioners or mental health expertise built within the emergency department. And there's no doubt we need more mental health beds. Mm. But we also need all the systems to be able to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, Community-wise, I think we need more um, services that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And yeah. we just saw examples uh, in the papers recently about our community uh, you know, acute access teams, the CAT teams they call them, and, and um, GPs are struggling to get those services. So they're really vital services for people when they need them. It seems incredible, think, isn't it, that they're not open 24-7? Because well, they're just not accessible when yeah. people really need them. And yeah. I think one of the things we therefore find is that the default option is, you know, come to the emergency department. Mm. Um, and we know from hearing from our patients that's, a, that's an intimidating environment, it's a scary environment, and sometimes it, it, it increases their anxiety. So yeah. we certainly need to look at uh, alternatives um, that are accessible and provide that sort of you yeah. know, therapeutic environment for mm. patients. What other issues um, are, do you think could be addressed at this election or afterwards in policy to do with emergency medicine? Well, I think we need to look at a whole lot of... There's, there's a number of different factors. One, there is the looking at the patients who are presented to emergency departments who need more community care. And homelessness, as we just discussed, yeah. is a big issue. Um, you know, people being discharged from hospitals with nowhere to live and we're expecting them to be able to coordinate their own health care without mm. that support. I think that's an mm. enormous issue. Aged care, um, there's gaps in aged care delivery. And again, you know, patients being able to access care within their aged care facility, particularly when they're reaching the end of their life. We're mm. seeing lots of patients being referred to emergency departments in the last hours or days of their life. Mm. Um, so we should be able to look after those patients better where they live. Mm. That's another big issue. Um, access to drug and alcohol beds. You know, unfortunately, some of these things are themes that have been rolling on and on they're through quite a long period of time. They're prolific, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. So we need something that's going to budge them, don't we? Well, I think it's it's about giving patients, particularly in, in the mental health space and the homeless space, I think it's about giving people a voice and having groups, you know, um, like Crokey and and, uh, and and us, mm. you know, doctors saying mm. it's not good enough yeah. because we're seeing this all day, every day, mm. um, and in many ways patients come into the ED um, for help makes us feel helpless as well because yeah. there's not a lot that we can you know we can offer band-aid solutions but not, we're not offering long-term solutions mm. and that's really distressing for our staff mm. as well yeah well, let's hope we can see something that makes a movement I think you're, you're right that listening to the the needs of the groups both the patients and the consumers yeah. and the people that are at the front line has to be an integral part of any policy doesn't it well that's right but we also need to get the message to to everybody's out there who who you know don't necessarily see this in their communities mm. every day yeah um, we're passionate about it because we see it and it's very easy mm. uh, to ignore this stuff mm. um, because you don't see it happening at your doorstep yeah um, it is happening. There's lots of people who are suffering, and and in, in a community in a society like ours, it actually is wealthy. Mm. We know that Australia is wealthy. We know yeah. Victoria is wealthy. Mm. We should be able to do a lot better. Yeah. Thanks, Simon. Really appreciate you coming yeah, out no for Crokey Go. All right. Thanks very much.